So let's go to underbarrels. Uh, wait, did I? Oh, here. So I run the no stock on my AK. So we got the underbarrels. Underbarrels, for the most part, are complete garbage. Um, again, because like I said before, you don't want to be relying on recoil control uh, because you don't need it. <clears throat> so the bipod, I mean, like, again, like if you have nothing else you want to run on your gun, you have like an empty slot and you're already running like the laser or something, then yeah, I mean, run the bipod. Again, it's all benefit for no drawback. But the problem is that you only get these benefits when you're prone and crouched, which you don't want to be crouching or proning in hardcore kill confirmed. You want to be moving around, you know, killing people. So, you know, I never run the bipod. The commando foregrip, again, you know, it doesn't say, <clears throat> like, all it says is that it increases your recoil stabilization and your aiming stability, which it does. But again, recoil stabilization is supposed to make your horizontal better, but it also increases your vertical by just a tiny bit. You're not going to notice that. The sway magnitude, yeah, it'll make your gun more steady, but you lose 2% movement and sprint speed, and you aim and... So yeah, that's a that's a huge drawback. You definitely do not want to run that. I, I mean, like, I wouldn't say you don't want to run that, but there's just better attachments that... Because the benefit with this one is that it doesn't decrease your aiming uh, aim down sight speed. So, you know, if you want to move a little slower and get this benefit, then okay. I mean, it's not terrible. You just shouldn't run it, in my opinion. All of the launchers are terrible. Like, I'm talking to the high explosive, the smoke screen, the incendiary, the concussive. Never run those. Those are stupid. Again, the game is not designed tactically enough for those to become useful. Um, I, I mean, again, I, I, I could see how you could get some use out of them. But you just don't want to waste your time with them. They're dumb. And, and it says they're not tested. Um, in the game, it says, it says like, this one, it'll make your movement speed worse, your aim down sight speed worse. So, boom. Two things you don't, you don't want to make worse, it makes worse. Just so you can get a, a noob tube. Okay, these noob tubes suck. The explosive radius is terrible. The time it takes to shoot them and reload them is terrible. I don't think... I don't think they get the benefits of amped. So you're going to be re reloading these things at, at, at regular speed always. And you can just carry around an RPG and get even better noob tubes that are faster. So just never, never run these. You're not. We t we talked about why smoke and uh, flashbangs and stuns are terrible anyway. So just don't run these. They're, they're dumb. Um, the Merc foregrip. Uh, okay, so in the game it says that it makes your aim down sight speed worse and something else. I can't. I think it's your aim movement speed. Um, it doesn't say it makes your movement speed worse or your sprint speed, but it does. It makes your aim down sight speed worse. Now, I'd say for this gun in particular, this is a decent attachment. I wouldn't want this movement penalty. I like to have my movement as high as possible. Um, the aim down sight speed is noticeable, but not too bad. And you do get a decent amount of vertical and hip fire. That's a that's a nice one. But again, I just I never run I never run under barrels because it's not, it's not worth the drawbacks. I would say it's debatable whether or not you want to run this one, but mainly for the hip fire. That's, that's the nice one. Being able to slide and jump and, you know, whatever, and be able to shoot people, that's nice. The tactical foregrip is just dumb. Like, I don't even know why it's in the game. You get worse movement speeds just for a more accurate weapon. Like, who cares? You know, you may as well... I mean, you may as well run this one. You get not as good sway magnitude, but you get... Re I don't know. I, I just wouldn't run this. Like, having your gun not sway as much is not important, as we've discussed already. Um... So operator foregrip. So it's kind of like the Merc foregrip, except that it aims worse. So you get worse aiming, but no movement penalties, but, and you only get the recoil control and not the hip fire. So it's kind of like, hmm, do I just want the recoil and a little bit better aiming? Or, or, oh wait, no, I'm sorry, I was reading that wrong. No, the operator foregrip is actually completely worthless, and you should never run it. Kind of. I mean, you don't get the movement penalties, but instead you get a worse aim down sight. I don't know. I, again, like just don't run. You, you don't want to run this anyway because it just makes your recoil better. You don't want to rely on that. Um, the Ranger foregrip. Here we go. It's kind of like the Merc foregrip, except instead of hip fire, it's sway magnitude. Again, that's irrelevant, and all these penalties are bad. Like you, just don't run this. It's ter I mean, look at that. It's terrible. Uh, yeah, the underbarrel shotgun is is obviously you don't want to use that. It's not. You know, it's not good. <laughs> It's kind of fun, like I won't lie about that, but all right, let's move on to magazines. Uh, magazines, for the most part, like ones that increase your like aim down sight and movement speed and stuff like that, are terrible or make it worse rather. Um, some of them are okay. Like you can see, the 40 round only increases your aim down sight by 1.5, which again we just said is like un not noticeable. 
you do sprint and move a little bit slower. And for 10 rounds, again, on hardcore, you're not going to need that because you have 30 rounds in your gun. So you have 30 potential kills right there. And if you really want to be cheeky about it, you could say, oh, well, the bullet could penetrate and it could penetrate all six enemies on the enemy team. So actually I have 180 potential kills, you know, but having 10 more rounds is not important. You don't need to rely on that. Um... Now, these rounds are weird. Again, I don't know if they fully tested them because it does make the shot weaker. Like, you're not... I don't... Unless you're point blank, you'll be able to get, like, a one-shot kill. But, like, once you get farther away, your damage range is important because then you won't get a one-shot. Um, and the limbs and whatnot, you can't get... Like, you have to actually aim at the, like, upper torso and stuff. Just for a little bit of fire rate. Like, if, if it kept the damage and everything of the actual... Like, like if, if it was still a one-shot anywhere and it increased your fire rate, that would be amazing. Like, I, w I would definitely consider running these because it's just increased in fire rate, but it doesn't say it actually changes your damage values. And really, you don't want to run this on the AK because it makes the gun weaker and not a one-shot. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, and then the 75-round the drum mag. Oh, my God. Okay, wow, you get 45 extra rounds. Look at that. That's the... Worst movement speed decrease I think we've seen. Maybe the barrel was worse, but that's terrible. And you get a pretty noticeable aim down sight time. So, like, the the reason you don't want to have big magazines is, again, we were talking about, like, scavenger and stuff like that before. Why are you spraying ammo everywhere? Why are you why are you keeping bullets in the, in the magazine that you're probably not even going to get to shoot because you'll die? You know, you can reload. Like, so all this really does for most guns is it'll... It'll make your magazine bigger, right? But your reserves are the same. So, like, for for this gun, I'm pretty sure you just get the the magazine you start with, so the 75 rounds, and then you get 75 more rounds in your reserve. So, all together, you get, what, 150? So, yeah, you do get more ammo, okay? But, like, with the regular AK, I think... I, I, I don't have HUD, uh, so I don't... I actually don't know exactly. I think you get 60, I'm pretty sure you get 60 rounds. So you get 30 in the magazine and then 60 extra. So that's three, that's three magazines in total. So yeah, that's not as much as this, but again, you're going to be finding ammo off dead players or yourself, or you're going to be picking up your friend's munitions box or, or picking up another gun. Like you don't, you don't need big magazines because if you're trying to kill somebody are you really going to dump 75 rounds into them before you kill them or they're going to shoot back at you and you're going to get, you know, you're going to die before you can get all those rounds out? Just don't don't run higher magazines. There's no reason for it like ever on any gun. <clears throat> all right. Now, the grip tapes um overall, okay, so I used to actually think that the rubberized grip tape was the best. Well, not the best, but like really good because I'm like, oh, it just increases your aiming stability and you get a little bit, bit, bit of recoil. Yes, you do, but look at that. It's only 4%. You're, you're honestly not going to notice that much at all. Um, and then the stipple grip is the one I always run. Like, I mean, look at that. Look at that. 13.6% on sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed. Like, that's... That's insane. So now we can we can stop running and getting the fire in position even faster. So I definitely always run this. This attachment is stupid. Um, unless you're running a marksman rifle or something like that, don't don't use this. Yeah, the downside is like hardly noticeable at all, um, and you do get you know that benefit. But again, like aiming stability is unimportant unless you're using a sniper rifle or something like that. Um, so let's let's equip that. Look at how much faster we are. I mean, we're we're almost. We're almost, in, not instant, but, like, it's so quick. You're going to be able to draw on people faster than they can even react sometimes. Like, that is so quick. Like, you're going to be so quick when you're moving around the map and getting ready to fight. It's amazing. And look at how fast we can aim our iron sights now. It's it's incredible. And all, all that's going to happen is your gun's going to sway around a little bit more. It's not a big deal at all. All right, so for the weapon perks, we're finally at the end here. Uh, most of the weapon perks are completely useless, and you should never run them. So let's let's go through all of them here. They're not tested here <clears throat> um, because again, they're it's not worth testing them to be honest. Okay, so fast melee makes you melee faster. Who cares? Again, on hardcore, you're gonna you're gonna one hit them with a melee attack anyway, but you're almost never gonna be in range to melee somebody. And if you are, just shoot them. You kill everything in one hit, and it's faster and safer. So just fast melee, never run this. Fully loaded, never run this. We talked about ammo. You do not need to be spraying however much reserve ammo you'll have if you're fully loaded. You do not need that much ammo. Just never run that. Never rely on having a ton of ammo that you're going to spray everywhere and be inaccurate with your shots. It's stupid. 
Frangible wounding. Um, okay, so wounding uh, is is a hundred percent worthless in hardcore because um, you don't regenerate health. So what it does is is when you shoot somebody, it delays the regeneration process, and it's actually pretty noticeable on on regular modes. Um, but again, this is yet again yet another reason why stim shots are amazing. Even if somebody has these on, you're gonna you're probably gonna stim up because you're wounded anyway. And it cancels this. So if they delay your health regeneration, you stem up and boom, you're, you're regenerating. So these are dumb. Never run these. And again, they don't work at all on hardcore because you don't regenerate health. Sleight of hand, obviously pretty useful. I don't run it on this class because it's not a huge benefit. It is faster. Um, but sleight of hand is definitely a good choice um, depending on the gun and whatnot. Recon, what does recon even do? I think it shows enemy nameplates farther away. You don't need that. You don't need the game... You don't need to rely on the game showing you a character's nameplate. Like you, if you can see their nameplate, that means you yourself should be able to see them. You do not need this. You should be able to see enemies yourself and not rely on the game showing you text above their head. That's so dumb. Uh, Mo money is dumb. Like why is this in the game? It, it, it gives you 10% more XP for headshots. Like. Wow, okay, so if you're leveling up your gun and you want to do it like a little bit faster, okay, not really useful, and it's never useful once the gun is full level anyway, so whatever. Frangible disabling, <clears throat> it's not useful. Um, in, in regular modes, e even in regular modes, it's, it's completely useless because what it does is, is when you shoot an enemy in the legs, it makes it so where they can't sprint anymore. Um, obviously in hardcore, if you shoot somebody in the legs with an AK, they're going to die or, you know, any other gun for the most part. So this is useless. And in regular modes, like, why are you shooting somebody in the legs? You should be shooting them in the upper chest and the head. You know, like this is dumb. Don't ever run this. Heavy hitter makes it to where the stun effect from when you're mailing somebody is more severe. Why would you ever want to run this? So if you're mailing somebody... Like, let's just say we're playing regular modes and not hardcore. If you're meleeing somebody, you're not going to stop meleeing them until they're dead. So them being stunned for longer is, like, who cares? You know, they're going to be dead before they even realize the effect happened. So this is a stupid perk. Uh, FMJ is the one I run on, like, almost every single class. So what what FMJ does is it does more damage to kill streaks. Um, and it also makes your bullets penetrate surfaces better, and that's the big one right there. Well, honestly, they're they're both big. So FMJ again, it allows me to shoot UAVs down with my AK in like four shots at most. I think I, I, for some reason I can't remember it. Like four or five shots to take down a UAV instead of like you know 20 or however many it is normally. Like it's it's huge. You can melt kill streaks with FMJ. So I'm taking down personal radars. I'm taking down. UAVs, so so they'll never ever be able to have UAV support at all. It'll take down counter UAVs. It'll take down VTOLs pretty well. Obviously, it's going to be kind of hard to get into a position where you can fire the VTOL without it killing you, because uh, cold blooded is dumb. Um, so yeah, I mean FMJ is fantastic. And the big the big thing, you, I get people calling me hackers all the time, uh, a hacker all the time, because um, FMJ lets you shoot through surfaces better. Or like, so what what it does is that. If there's a surface that your bullet can't penetrate without FMJ, there's a there's a decent chance that your bullet will hit the wall harder now with FMJ that it'll actually be able to penetrate through. And then when it penetrates through, it'll do more damage. So if there's if you're shooting through wood uh, and you, like you don't have FMJ, let's just say you shoot somebody through wood and it does 20 damage without FMJ. Well, if you put FMJ on, you'll shoot through that wood and now you'll do 30. So you know you can see the benefit in that. So you can you can if if you see somebody on the map and on the UAV and you can, you don't have a direct line of sight on them but you know they're right in front of you on the other side of that wall you can just shoot through that wall and they're dead you know like it's FMJ is god tier like it, it's it's amazing uh, and there's no drawbacks to it obviously deep breath is obviously irrelevant this is only important if you're running a scope um, it just lets you hold your breath longer and like why would you want to do that. <laughs> uh, even with a sniper rifle, like you don't need, like you don't need to be holding your breath trying to get a target for like 10 seconds or however long it is. Like that's completely irrelevant. So like, literally the only perks that you should ever even consider is FMJ and sleight of hand. Like that's actually the only two perks. All these other perks are dumb and stupid. So <clears throat> FMJ, honestly, like, like having faster reloading is really nice. Like it lets you get back in the action faster. But 
really with 30 rounds you're only fighting six people right so you should be able to take out six people with 30 rounds if you're good enough and so you'll have plenty of time to reload safely after that so fmj is just invaluable it's amazing um so yeah look at look at this We've kitted our gun out in a, in a specific way to where none of these are red, so we have zero downsides. Z well, except for the aiming stability. So our gun's going to sway just a little bit more, which we already said is not important, but we get all this benefit. We're super fast, we run really fast, we have better hip fire, we have faster aim down sight, faster tactical sprint to fire speed, sprint to fire speed, aim down sight movement speed, and sprint speed. So we're just super quick, we're killing things in one hit. And we're accurate while we do it, and we're fast when we do it. So, I mean, it, I, this, this is just like a god-tier weapon setup for hardcore. I think it's I think it's the best overall. In my opinion, this is the absolute best weapon in hardcore overall for every everything. It, it's a sniper rifle. It's a submachine gun because of the tight hip fire and the fast handling. It's an assault rifle. It's, it's not a shotgun, but it kind of is because of the tight handling. Um, it's just amazing. The only drawback with the AK overall is the slow rate of fire. Um, but, you know, that shouldn't be much of a problem, really. Uh, it reloads really quickly. That's pretty fast. Like, you can, it, once you get that, that pattern of the, of hearing the click of that, that magazine going in, you can cancel the reload and, and get it, get it in the 2.5, uh, 15 seconds. It's God tier. It's, and it has good bullet velocity and it's fast at sprinting just overall. Like, it's, it's God tier. So, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, briefly at the end here is never obviously we're going through the actual hard data values of of the attachments like it's inarguable um never pay attention to the bars in the game and i'm talking about like you know like there's like down here on the end of the screen there's like the like the stats of the gun like mobility accuracy damage and that stuff never never rely on that 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 chart is completely like actually useless it, it's it's it doesn't it doesn't reflect what the gun is actually doing. So, like, when you equip FMJ, it makes the damage bar go up. And a lot of people think that FMJ makes your gun do more damage. That's not... No, it doesn't. It'll make the gun do more damage against kill streaks, and it'll make it do more damage through walls, but it's not making the gun do more damage. It's just making it do more damage against kill streaks and, and against enemies that you shot through the wall. It's not make so like if the gun when you shoot somebody it does 50 damage it's not gonna do 60 damage when you shoot them now that's not how that works or like um, when you equip uh, <clears throat> you know when you equip stipple grip tape it makes your aim down sight faster and your sprint to fire faster well in the game you have the mobility it'll you'll have the mobility bar it just says mobility and it'll go up well what does that mean do, does that mean this attachment makes me run faster no it doesn't it's just so, so just never, never pay attention to that bar in the game or the the graph in the game. It's actually completely useless and it's just gonna lie to you. Just never use it. Um, so, all right, that is the end of this episode. Um, I just wanted to stop there because it's already pretty long, um, and you get the idea of how to use the site. I'm obviously not gonna go and do every single gun. Um, I just wanted to show you this class setup for this gun because this is like the one I always use. Uh, there's one other one. Uh, so I run the I run another shotgun, but sadly none of the shotguns in this game or uh, on the site are like tested, um, and that's because I, I guess they're just inconvenient and they never, they just never did them. It's kind of hard to test the shotguns because each pellet does damage and like each shotgun shoots a different amount of pellets and trying to test. I don't know, whatever. So, sadly, none of these are tested. I wish they were, because I run a 725 class. It's like my super mobility close quarters uh, setup, but I can't actually get the hard value. But when we get into the gameplay, I'll kind of talk about it. But, uh, yeah, we'll just end the episode there, and I'll see you in episode 8.